Hi, my name is Dr. Judith Joseph, and I'm a child and adolescent psychiatry resident at the NYU Child Study Center. Thank you for joining us for our Grand Rounds lecture series, where we get to talk with experts in the field of child and adolescent psychiatry. We have the pleasure of having Dr. Philip Shaw. He's a psychiatrist and an investigator at the National Human Genome Research Institute. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. You gave a really interesting talk about neuroimaging and ADHD. Tell us, is the brain structure different with ADHD? So in kids with ADHD, there are very, very subtle differences in brain structure. Mm -hmm. to, so to detect these differences, what you have to do is actually get lots of kids with ADHD, compare them against lots of kids who don't have ADHD. And then at the, in that sort of comparison, you do find subtle differences. What I will say is that we're not yet at the stage where we can use these images as a clinical tool. So for example, I can't tell from the brain image of a child uh, whether this child has ADHD or not. You know, that's still based on the clinical history that we get from the kid, the parents, and the teachers. Mm -hmm. And if brain structures are different uh, or abnormal, does this change over time? Some people think that uh, as many individuals know, if you have ADHD, as you grow up into adulthood, there's a very variable outcome of ADHD. Some people, the problems persist into adulthood, some get completely problem-free by the time they're adults. There's some evidence from some work that what's happening in the brain goes along with this different clinical course. So as you're getting a bit better, perhaps the brain, in terms of its structure and function, is looking a bit more like individuals, adults, who don't have ADHD. Whereas if you have ADHD which persists into adulthood, maybe the brain structure and function is a little bit different. Those differences persist from, from childhood. Mm. Wow, that is interesting. And how does understanding um, the brain structure and these changes over time, how does that affect treatment of ADHD? To be honest with you, it doesn't do. Mm. Neuroimaging doesn't affect clinical management. Clinical management is still based on the symptoms that the child has, the problems that the child has. So whenever you meet with the psychiatrist, the last thing you ask for is a brain scan. You know, mm -hmm. What's much more important is to make sure the teachers are involved, the parents are involved, and the kid is involved. That, that's the key to good management of ADHD. Now, not this very sophisticated brain imaging. I don't think we'll be saying that, I'll add, in about 10 or 15 years. I think neuroimaging is really advancing very quickly. What is giving us lots of insights into it at the minute is what might be going wrong. And I think that will really eventually impact on how we treat and manage ADHD but we really aren't there yet. Wow, we learned so much from you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again for having me here.